Hey there guys, Nick Clark here, welcome to Focus Fitness Training. Today's day we're doing a new edition of our bodyweight evolution, okay? And in this one, we're going to be hitting the legs, okay? Now, uh, the exercise we're going to be doing is a Bulgarian split squat, okay? Now, as I said over my social media and my tweets a few days ago, obviously there's several different ways you can do this, okay? And I'm going to show you four different examples, bodyweight version, okay? Um, and how you can get great results by just doing it with bodyweight versions, okay? Um, but obviously, firstly, the <coughs> muscles you're gonna be using in these um, in this exercise um, is basically gonna be the glutes, okay, which is your bum, okay, your hip flexors, your quads, and the hamstrings, okay? You will engage your core while you're doing it, okay? Uh, so you'll get some, obviously, some core activation, okay? But they're gonna be the main muscles you're working. You will get some secondary muscles Obviously, from like the feet, the ankles, and the calves, and obviously around the shin area, okay. But you may need to be working sort of your upper lower body, okay. Uh, but the first one we're going to do is a normal Bulgarian split squat, okay. So we're going to see how you can execute it properly, okay, um, before <coughs> you get onto the advanced versions. So get your or couch or you know, big step or some steps somewhere where you can basically elevate one of your legs. Now it doesn't matter if you start on your right leg or your left leg, it's completely up to you and up your preference really. Okay? Now some people like to do it on toes, some people like to do it on flat, okay? Again that's your preference, it's up to you. Okay? So <coughs> choose the leg that you're ready to do, okay? Obviously just steady yourself, okay? And when you're ready you go down, okay? Like so. Try not to let your knees go over your toes, or even if it goes over slightly, okay? It's not a major issue, but try to keep them sort of behind the toes, primarily, okay? Go down nice and slowly. Okay, but when you come up, really engage your glutes, okay? Really sort of push with those muscles as you come up, really sort of tense them, contract them, okay? And that way you'll strengthen up your glutes, okay? And obviously also work on your hip flexors, okay? So make sure that you get full hip extension. So like I said in my, in my dad's video the other week, okay? Obviously I told you uh, when you're doing step ups and that to get full hip extension, because the more full hip extension you get, obviously the stronger the muscles can become and the better they work, okay? So like I say, obviously swap legs, make sure you do do that as well, okay? Because a lot of people tend not to. Okay, but get, again, get yourself sort of comfortable, okay, and then perform an exercise and go down, okay. Don't let your knee touch the floor, the back one, okay. Just hover above it, okay. Have your hands where you feel comfortable, where it's down on the sides, by your heads, or in front of you, like me, okay. And this is how you do a normal exercise, okay. That is how you're going to execute a ball going split squat properly. Okay, and in a normal version. Now, with all of these different versions, there's no rep range. Okay, I'm not going to tell you to do 10 to 12, or 5 to 10, or you know, 15 to 20. Okay, because there's no point. Because this is bodyweight evolution, so there's no rep range. Okay, when you're doing bodyweight um, sort of working out, okay, you don't need to do rep ranges because everyone has a different strength level. Some people are stronger than others, and some aren't. Okay, so if you can do 20 pull-ups and somebody can only do 5, then there's no point in me setting a rep range for that, okay? Because if you can't do 20 and you can only do 5, then it would be pointless me actually setting a rep range, wasn't it? Okay, you do what you can do, okay? So if you can only do 5, you can only do 5. If you can do 10, you can do 10. You know, if you do 15, you do 15, okay? But do it to failure, okay? And when you hit failure, or if you try and push through that, Okay, so try and get an extra two to three reps when you really get to that point where you're struggling. Okay, really try and push through it. Okay, because those last two to three reps are sometimes the most important. Okay, and they're the ones that make changes in your body. Okay, really, really push yourself to the absolute limits and leave it all out on the floor. Okay, anyway, that was the first one. Okay, the second one I'm going to do has an explosive component to it, okay? So if you're an athlete or you uh, sort of somebody that does a sport that has like an explosive 
or needs to be explosive, okay, um, then obviously this form is going to help you. So basically, <coughs> get again yourself comfortable, make sure your foot's facing forwards, okay, and you're going to go down, bring it down, and jump up. Bring it down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, and again, make sure you swap legs, okay, now maybe try and roll with a chair like this, you may move a little bit, so you have to be quite stable, okay, when you're doing it. So again, up, 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 okay. Now, also you may find on that one that your knee does tend to go over your toes a little bit, okay. Because it's not, it's not a major thing if it goes slightly over your toes, okay, so don't worry too much, okay, but often you always try and keep it behind your toes as much as you possibly can, okay, but with explosive one, you'll find that you may not go down completely as far, okay, so you may sort of be, not going down as low as you, as you would on a normal bowl going a split squat, because uh, <coughs> you may not be strong enough to do the explosive one um, from that far down, okay, but you can again build up to that. Okay? Um, but again, no rip range for that one. Do that to failure. Do it on both legs. Okay? And again, make sure you contract those glutes, hip flexors, and quads, and hamstrings as well. Okay? Just make sure you really put all the intensity into that. Okay? When you're doing the exercise. Okay? Anyway, the next one we're doing, okay, uh, <coughs> is slow mo. Okay? Now, slow mo obviously is going to be one which gives you more control of the muscles, okay? You're really going to be able to feel the contraction, really get a better mind-muscle connection of doing it, okay? Uh, and I find that that's a great way of training, okay? Because it allows you, like, the, like I said, to become in control of the muscles. You control the muscles, not the muscles control you. So like when you do go on to a weighted version of the exercise, that again, you're still in control. Not the weights will be in control of you, or the exercise will be in control of you, but you'll be in control on all of it, from start to finish, okay? And you'll be able to feel that contraction from start to finish as well, okay? So, the slow mo, they sometimes call it crazy eights, okay? Um, because what you're doing eight seconds down, eight seconds up, okay? It's pretty insane, okay? But it does cause some major muscle fiber damage, okay, um, and gives you great results. Okay, so again, get to the front wall, okay, put in a chair a little bit, okay, it's a bit far away. Okay, get yourself comfortable, and then sort of down for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, again, engage those glutes as you come up. Okay, really, really sort of push yourself up with them and with your quads as well. Really sort of push yourself up nice, slowly. Okay, you're going to do it uh, really, really effectively as well. Now, if you can't do the 8 seconds, do it for 4, okay? That's if you can't do it for 8 seconds, okay? 4 is exactly the same, it's just a slightly quicker tempo, okay? So it's down for 1, 2, 3, 4. And then up for 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, three, four. Okay, again, engage those glutes. Okay, and that is how you do slow motion training. Now, as you can see on that, it was slow, it was controlled, it was, you know, sort of, there's no rushing it. Okay, so if you are going to implement that in your training, I do, would recommend it because it's a fantastic way to train. Okay, and you implement that with any muscle, biceps, triceps, back, chest, shoulders, okay, um, <clears throat> but make sure it's a, a way you can handle it, obviously, but again, great way to train, I find, okay, um, again, no rep range, just to 
your failure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and the next one, the last one is one and a half rep ranges. Okay, so this is where you're really going to cause some major, I mean proper major muscle fiber damage in a good way. Okay, basically you can do a one and a half rep. Okay, and obviously when you're sort of like stopping in that half range and then going through the full rep, okay, is where you cause the most muscle fiber damage. Okay, because it means you need to recruit more muscle fibers to actually help you stop in that position and then re-engage where you're going, okay? Um, so it's a really good way of training, I find, okay? But one and a half rep is one rep, okay? It's not one and a half reps. It, obviously, it is a one and a half rep, but it only counts as one rep when you're doing your training, okay? So again, you get yourself comfortable. Okay, with your leg. Okay, and then you're gonna go down. Okay, fully up half and then back down and then up full. Okay, so down, up half, back down, up fully. Down, up half, down, up fully. Okay, and again, just on the other side, you can get yourself comfortable. Okay, and then down, fully. Up half, up down, and up, down, up half, down, and up, back down, up half, down, and up fully. Okay? Again, make sure you engage those quads and the glutes and the hip flexors, really sort of push and thrust through with them, okay, so that you get the proper contraction. Okay? But again, that one's a failure, okay? So do what you can on each leg, okay? Make sure you short those legs, okay? Because some people do tend to forget that, okay? Um, <clears throat> now you may find that one leg is stronger than the other, okay? So if you do do one more rep, sort of, on the other leg than you do the other, don't worry too much, but try and keep it level, okay? Because uh, it's always good. But anyway, that is the Bodyweight Evolution Legs video in the books okay um i hope you enjoyed it hope you liked it if you did give it a like and a thumbs up obviously um i hope you found it informative and quite useful um if you think it's gonna help a friend out get them to sort of a uh, uh, sort of look at it obviously watch it um and subscribe to the youtube channel okay but obviously don't forget to follow us on facebook instagram and twitter but like i say obviously also the youtube channel focus fitness but also click the link down below, the subscribe button, okay, because that way you're never going to sort of miss a video posted on this channel, okay, and you'll get to follow us every single step of the way. And if any friends or families want to do that as well, get them to click on the subscribe, and then obviously they can follow us every single uh, step of the way, and obviously you never miss a video that's posted, okay. Uh, but like I say, obviously, also if you've got some comments that you want to sort of uh, leave or send to me, okay, what you think about the video, what you thought about the video, or how you felt the exercises went after you've tried them, if you can't wait to go away and try this, okay, um, or if you, you can implement this into your training straight away, okay. But obviously, like I said, obviously, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Or if you did, give it a like, obviously, and I'll see you guys in a few days with a new video. Cheers, bye.